video going everything's going everything's going my way right now when i'm recording not so much life is this in frame oh that's irritating let's go ahead and let's kill that how about i pull up an image of things that'll burn hell maybe that maybe that'll work let's get rid of you this is all shit i should have done before i started recording but here we are just stated things are going my way now i'm changing it up just so i can get enough time to fuck myself just enough time to fuck myself. From Loitering in Wonderland Studios. <laughs> With Phoenix West. Super hungover. I guess we'll just do this. Uh, I'll hair the dog. Is there someone out there eating dog hair? Why the fuck did that phrase come into in the in the being. I don't get it. I, I don't get why phrases come about. You got some weird fucking people out there eating dog hair. If they need a, the hair of the dog to avoid shit. If you're eating dog hair to avoid anything, your life has gone horribly wrong. You're probably an Elvis impersonator. I don't know if that episode's dropped yet. It might be the one before this one or a couple before this one. And speaking of dogs, you know what? I was going to, I was going to set this down and just start doing something else and just do my fit full intro. But speaking of dogs, let's do this. Things That Will Burn in Hell, number 75, Scooby-Doo. Things That Will Burn in Hell, number 75, Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Don't. Mr. scooby dooby doo where exactly are you? Well, chances are that he's off solving another bullshit ghost mystery. The longevity of this show is more of a mystery than the plots of the episodes themselves. You think after the 20th time where the ghost turned out to be the mischievous owner of some company in a sheet with flashlights in his sleeves and other gadgetry to make him look like a ghost, that Scooby-Doo and the gang would either stop trying to solve ghost cases or stop being so damn surprised as just some dick in a costume. As the show continued to grow stale, the producers came up with a genius idea. Let's throw in the bastard offspring of Satan and make him puppy form. Thus was drawn into existence Scrappy-Doo. Whenever I watch Old Yeller, which is infrequent, in fact never, I like to pretend that it's Scrappy-Doo tied to that tree instead of Old Yeller. I tried to figure out exactly what the Mystery Machine crew were, and all I could think of was one word. Homeless. Think about it. They travel in a van all day and all night. They live out of the van and or hotels. That's what they call homeless, folks. They have no bills or actual employment. They don't pay taxes because they work for cash. I'm fairly certain they don't even have detective credentials. Dogs can't go to detective school even if they can barely speak English. All signs point to either fugitives or drug dealers. Perhaps they should consider a career in dog training, as they seem to have trained both Scooby and Scrappy to speak English. Maybe then they could afford a decent vehicle, or who knows, maybe even an apartment. On top of the shitty television show, there are also two live action movies made. I wasn't surprised to see how shitty they were, but it really depressed me to see Matthew Lillard in them. This man can actually act, and he's playing Shaggy for Christ's sake. Someone tell him to cut off all communication with Freddie Prince Jr. Dear Shaggy, get help, sir. There are places you can turn to when you have an eating disorder. You're obviously bulimic. Nobody on the planet can eat all day long and still be skinnier than a crackhead. I've never seen you either shit or throw up on the show, but you know damn well one of them is happening at an alarming rate. Get help before it's too late. Uh, I guess that's all I'm doing for my intro. So I guess we're back from the, from the book part now. I feel so unprepared. I'm in a new room. I just moved the set over one room in my house and calling it a new set because I got bored. I get bored and I move things around a lot, if you haven't noticed. So welcome back. Uh, what the fuck is with Scooby-Doo? I don't get Hanna-Barbera. I don't get their comedy. I never thought anything they've ever done is funny on their goddamn shows. Never actually genuinely laughed. It. I guess my biggest problem isn't so much with the moment-to-moment -moment things in the show for Scooby-Doo, because overall, I kind of like Scooby-Doo. There's a part of it I like. However, I also was not a typical child where I was like, ah, you know, having fun. I'm like, this is the 140th time they've pulled off this sheet and found out it was the guy who told them nothing was happening from the beginning of the episode. It wasn't a ghost again. Why, do you, why the fuck do you still think ghosts exist, you sons of bitches? And the, and the cast of characters is individually the most irritating people on the planet. We've got a dog who can barely speak English and just... And then we got his little son of a bitch nephew, which is the most irritating character ever drawn into existence. Holy shit, I hate that fucking mutt. That's one dog I fully advise to euthanize. So those are two of them. We got uh, clearly a guy who's like a fucking stoner and just eats hamburgers. And, and he's so fucking stoned out of his mind, he's like... 
I want to eat dog treats. I want to be obsessed with dog treats. There's no sober person who eats dog treats on a regular basis. That guy has a fucking mental issue or he's he's super fucking high on drugs. I, I don't want to eat the drugs he's taken that makes him think dog food is a good idea. And we got, what, Velma? Is she the one that's the blonde or is she the other one? Daphne's the blonde, right? So Daphne, let's just start with her. She has no character. They wrote nothing about her. Really, go back and watch the cartoon. Daphne has nothing to do. She just feeds off Fred. She's this there as dead weight. I, I can't name one characteristic of her other than she's blonde. And then we got Velma, who's an interesting bookworm. She's a little reluctant. She's also the one that figures everything out. She's the only one who's useful in the entire group. The only one. She's the one person in the group who should be doing this job. The rest of them are fuck-ups. We got Fred after that, an ascot wearing straight man. Let's just call him that. Straight man in one way only. He's there as he's serious and that's all he does. And everyone else is fuck-ups around him. And that's our cast of characters in this show. And then it's just a weekly cycle of characters who run theme parks run haunted hotels, run, like, f then they run the Kiss. Kiss, Harlem Globetrotters, and then, what the fuck? It's the, it's the most, I'm getting angry, so I'm pacing around. It's the most irritating show on the planet when you really focus on it as a whole. But when you zoom down to the episode, I'm like, yeah, I can watch one episode. Then you watch the second episode, you're like, that was the same fucking episode. Just switch out the theme, the, the place that they're at. Switch out the location. New episode. The same reason I can't watch the CSI shows. Every episode is the fucking same. The biggest star in the cast that isn't on the show normally, go to be your killer. You should figure that shit out by now, CSI. If you haven't figured that out as your CSI training to recognize the biggest celebrity in your cast and then just assume that's the killer, because I'd say 99% of the time it is. I don't know how to respond to that. Neither do I. What is... Why are you answering me? I did not say your name. Fuck off. Is Hannah Barbera listening? What the shit was that? I didn't say... What? I didn't even know what I would have to say to get that thing to do that. I just got the iPhone 10. What, what do I gotta say? Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Sir I can't summon the beast when I want to. It's My phone must be haunted. I wonder if Jimmy Smith is here. I bet he's on the fucking phone. He's the killer. Scooby Doo, go fuck yourself. I don't know if I should even bother. I, I've done this set on, on stage before from the book. Maybe I'll throw this in here at the end. I don't know. It depends on if the quality's good enough because I didn't mic myself up. I just had the camera mic. They sound kind of shitty and it makes it sound like it doesn't work at all. So maybe I'll do it. If I throw it in, it'll be right here. And we're back. Or we didn't leave at all because the footage wasn't good enough. <laughs> So go to LAWstudios.com and all those other things that are, where's the most space? It's probably down here on the page because that's this couch down here. Looking at my phone here. So my other phone, I have two phones because I'm a pimp. Yeah, Westside. So go do, do those things. I'll get back to serious. Go, go do those things. Go there. Do those things. Uh, for the audio listeners, LAWstudios.com, YouTube.com slash Loading Wonderland. LoadingWonderland at gmail.com, patreon.com slash LoadingWonderland Studios. Who fucking cares? So, uh, we're almost to episode 100. I mean, we're on episode 75. We're three quarters of the way there, guys. We're almost done. And then we're going to take a long break from the show while I write the second book, which is, I'd say, I think it's technically 40% done, but that's without editing. So, I'd say we're 35% done, 30% done. i got to go back and edit, obviously. I am a writer. I mean... <laughs> This is a fancy novel. This is a fancy show. So I gotta, I gotta proofread. I gotta go back. I gotta do edits, do second drafts, third drafts, four drafts. Turn into my editor. She sends it back over to me. It's like, please stop mailing me, Phoenix. I don't know who you are. Why you're doing this? We don't want your book over here at Penguin Press. Please stop. And then I'm like, oh, it's a deceased and desist letter again. I should probably stop doing that. Oh, it's just one more try. And it's a vicious cycle. Just like Scooby Doo. It's just so repetitive. I should really know what's gonna happen by now, but. Maybe the publisher's haunted. Oh shit. Let's go get a devil dog in the case to annoy everybody and fuck shit up. Yeah. Oh, uh, until next time, in the meantime, I'm Phoenix West. I'll see Scooby-Doo in hell. 
He might make it to heaven, actually. Scrappy-Doo, though, is already in hell because he was forged by the fires. Because that dog is a fucking demon. There's no way he wasn't made in hell. So he'll probably go back there when he's dead. And considering he's 60-some years old by now, maybe 70, 80, that dog's apparently eternal, so maybe I'll beat him there. I don't know. Either way, see you there, Scooby-Doo, Hanna-Barbera. Most, most child cartoons are terrible. I'll see you all there. You guys ready to get this Nate Talbot going? Yeah! Holy oh, shit, let's do this. All right, hey, our next comic is funny as hell. Uh, I've seen it before before, man. Oh my God. Uh, you guys in for a treat? Yeah. Round of applause right now for Phoenix West! Woo -hoo! <laughs> Phoenix West, I'm not complaining about things for too long. Just a warning. Um, random things too, like uh, Scooby Doo has been on television for 46 years now. You guys aware of this? That's that's a half a century, and every fucking episode and movie is the exact same. Did anybody, anybody here a fan of Scooby Doo? Like an actual fan? Exactly. It's been on for 46 years, not one fan. Every fucking episode is the same. I like the Scooby Snacks. You like Scooby Snacks? You like Shaggy? It's fine. <laughs> you high? <laughs> you know, uh, but it's the point where the longevity and the popularity of the show is actually more of a mystery to me than the, the plots to the episodes themselves. Because you think after the 20th fucking time where they, Scooby and the gang, find out that the ghost was really just a mischievous owner of some company in a, in a, under a blanket with flashlights in his sleeves and other gadgetry to make him look like a, a fucking ghost. They either stop trying to solve ghost crimes or just stop being so fucking surprised it's just some dick in a sheet every time. <laughs> and when I was watching it as an adult, this is a childhood classic, but I watched it as an adult and I was trying to figure out what this weird cast of characters is. Because they're really weird, they're all different. And all I can think of is, oh yeah! They're homeless. They live in a goddamn van. They're in there all day, all night. You never see them in a residence, at, a, at, a, at their house. There's, there's not like a laid back episode. But I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. They're just homeless, that's fine. I, they, they're like detectives for hire. They're like detective day laborers. They show up and they wander the land like samurais just looking for work. And then uh, and, and they work for cash. So I really, really doubt they pay their taxes. Because why would you? And I was like, oh, they're, yeah, they, they just don't pay taxes, and that's what they do. And I really doubt they have detective credentials. I really doubt it. Even if the people do, that fucking dog, Scooby, no way. They don't all have dogs, even if they can speak English. I really doubt they fucking let them in there. There's rules at academies, the reputable ones at least. And uh, that's really where they should put all their eggs, into the dog training basket. Because if you manage to teach two dogs, Scrappy and Scooby, to teach passable English. That's a really, really valuable skill. Can you imagine if your dog could talk to you? That you pay high money for that, right? You, you think they could at least, you know, do that and get a fucking a decent vehicle and the one that's not like a rape van? A mystery machine that says anything like scaring the local kids? Or at least a fucking apartment that they could all share. I don't care. Something. Um, so I invited Shaggy out. Does anybody see a six foot hunched over stone cartoon guy walking around? No? All right, well, I invited him out for a, for intervention. So, if, but I'll read it to him, to you guys and you pass along if you see him, okay? Uh, Dear Shaggy, get help, sir. There are places you can turn to when you have an eating disorder. You're obviously bulimic. Nobody on the planet can eat all day long and still be skinnier than a crackhead. I've never seen you either shit or throw up on the show, but considering how many foot-long subs you eat in one bite, you know damn well one of them's happening at an alarming rate. Get help before it's too late. Huh. Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, P.S. Sorry, it's not over. You get so high that you beg for dog treats. <laughs> then your friends laugh at you. Then you laugh. But then you eat the dog treats, and that makes it no longer a joke. Your friends are enabling you. <laughs> if you see him, pass it along. <laughs>